So my name is Sheo Awal, and then I'm here to present my talk on for Python for security enthusiasts and ethical hackers. So who am I? So I'm an ethical hacker. I do exploit research, reverse engineer, and malware analysis. So I like breaking into networks, systems, and anything hackable. In Usman Nonford University, Sokoto. So I do web mobile and network penetration testing. I find a couple of bugs in top companies, which includes Adobe, Trend Micro, and some in Nigeria as well. So I'm the author of How to Secure WordPress Sites Against Hackers. I do InfoSec research in malware, and right now I do APT, Advanced Persistent Threat. So currently we start up Kano and OAP's Open Web Security Application Project and Parasec Ambassador. So then, Simple is better than complex. Complex is better than complicated when you import this, right? So here in this, um, what is it called? I try to write a simple script in C, which is going to get your host. Like you type google.com, so is you are going to get the IP address of google.com or any website. So this is just the code here, displaying here. In I imported a lot of headers. In so, and then after that, I converted the code in assembly. So, because right now, when you are coding in assembly, you know you have to know about the registers, the sysscores, calls, and other things like that. So, this is assembly language. <laughs> all right. So, this part of all this assembly language, as you can see, after I, combat, I converted the course into C, into assembly language from C. So, but in just five lines of course, this is what I can do with Python. Just import sockets, do the domain, the URL, then use the DNS like the variable name, then get host by name and just type your IP where you see enter URL, local host, and you are just going to you are going to get your IP immediately after you enter the domain name. It's just pipeline of course. Instead of you just wasting your time writing a bunch of headers like and other things before you can just do that in other programming language. All right. So I'll be discussing about the network. So here, this is maybe like, for example, you are going to pen test a network, so you don't have much tools, like you don't have Wireshark, you don't have BetaCap or EtherCap for MITM. So what are you going to do? First thing, or what actually differentiates people, like script kiddies from pro hackers or from professional security, is how to write your tools. Because script kiddies depends on already written tools by other hackers. So that's what actually differentiates you. So you are already on a system, because like Kali has a bunch of tools, like you have the Wireshark, the uh, all bunch of tools. But you are already given a new distro, or a new Linux where you don't have all these tools. So the only options right now for you left now is for you to code your own tools. So and that's where Python comes in. So for example, this is Wireshark. So I try to capture packets, like packets, so where you see TCP, so for example here now, I try to make a request. As you know, we have the request and response from client to server. So you are requesting and you are having a response back from server. So, and this is where the source port, the destination port, and other things like that. So, and here is it also. So I'm trying to get a page of SQLIS from my local server, and then, these are a bunch of headers in Ezadezima. So, like for example now, <laughs> am I like, are you understand what I'm saying? Like <laughs> 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 so that's busy, okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> so, but before I continue, I want to know how many InfoSec guys we have here. People into InfoSec, apart from developers. InfoSec. So the InfoSec guy, are you understanding me? Are you getting what I'm saying? All right. <laughs> so, okay. So I'm trying to make a request right now on the header. Like, so for example, you can have your pop suite where you are making a request and you can be able to view your request and response from the server. But when you are in network, so you can have tools like Wireshark, so where you can check the packets as you are sending and you are also receiving the packets. So 
After I check the header files, this is what I get. I'm getting a file from SQLI, the host header, and the header information, right? So, and this is the response also I got back from the server in this blue. And this is the S code, as you can see. As you know, as a resume and other stuff. So, this bunch of tools you see, this bunch of what's it called? Of what I highlighted here is the system trees, syscalls of the sockets, what's it called? Of the sockets, syscalls. I traced, I traced the syscalls of the C program I, write, I wrote earlier, which I showed you in C. When I was trying to convert an, a DNS, a domain, like google.com to its IP. So I do S trace, like system trace, to check what actually it's called. So it's called this socket AF, INET, then SOC stream also, in which Python has already also provided for you, using the import socket. So all you have to do is just import socket. Then you can do a lot of other things you wish to do. So and instead of you writing the raw socket yourself, import sockets, knowing other about other connection protocols like the TCP, the HTTP, and other things. So this is where SKP comes. So SKP. So with SKP, it's just a module. You can just use pip install, and you can run it either in the Python, or you can just run it as an interactive shell, just like Python 3, once, once you run it on your terminal. So this is what I do. So can you see it clearly? Can you see packets? You, you can't see it. So I try to, can you see this icon, sniff, eye face? Can you see it, please? All right. So I make a variable name using the sniff functions to eye face, that is the interface. So which is wireless LAN, WLAN 0 or L0 for localhost or H0 or H1 for your Ethernet. Then the count of the packet to sniff, maybe like 5, 10 and other things like that. Then PyCon for 0. Icon, which I put it in in list. Is this list? Yeah. So to to list the list of packets to check from. So this is exactly how the was how the Wireshark looks exactly like. So the source IP and the destination IP here, and other bunch of information also. So also if you don't want to view it also here like this, you can also view it in using the dot show, Pycon with the name the dot show functions. So. Also, you can dump the packet in, in S with S dump also. So this is how packet also usually looks like in S. So you can also dump it like this. So writing dump pack with WPRC cap and read with RDP cap. So for example, if you already have maybe like a packet in which you use Wireshark, use, you already use Wireshark to sniff the packet and you exported it. So but you already have a new system maybe or your phone because anywhere you go, you can at least see a Python interactive share. You can just go to Play Store and have a just Python installed. Then you can just make the read file. You can just create a variable name and you can import the packets from the Wireshark. And also you can export it also from SCP to Wireshark. So you can use it to view your, your packets. So this is live capturing of packets with Lambda, in which after I will show you some demo on how packets have been captured. So packet destination, in which you want to check maybe like, for example, the destination of the, the destination of the domain. Because for example, now you are requesting of something. So you want to check the destination. So this is how you check after you like write the IP function, then the destination of where your packet should be sent to. Because automatically your router is the one to do that for you. Once you enter google.com, your router already knows where to route the packet too. So, but for example, if you can just create your own, like your own rock, your own packet. So you just write the destination of where to send the packet to. Then you can also check a way to receive it. So this configuration list of list the configurations in which the packet the SCP offers you, like the check IP address, check PID, and other things like that. So like conf .rot, just exactly like once you do route dash n on your Linux terminal. So this is exactly what it will give you, your network interface, both the local and the actual network you are connected with, with the gateway, and also the 
and also your IP with the next mask and other information. So then risk AP documentation for other things. All right. So you already know now how to import sockets now. You get the IP. So but there's one tools like you use once like you use when pen testing on network, which is Nmap. And there's also Python Nmap, which actually once you once you pip install Nmap, then you are going to have import you just have to import Nmap, then do the post scanner, then list of information to see like the version. Can you see it? The version of the OS, the open ports, and other information. Just use import and map. So why this part, why this is so important is that there are some ways that you can just have a two, a system instead of you just doing one on one installation. But once you already have your Python installed, you can just create a script to do all this automation for you instead of you just doing the uh, installing them one by one. So you can just cre actually create a script to do them for you. So there's another one also called Paramico. So what Paramico can be used, like just be expect. So it can be used to automate SHSH login, secure shell. So for example, now this is the one I wrote using Paramico, and you can also use PSPECT and other libraries or modules. So can you see it all? So I imported Paramico, then import sockets. Even socket is not necessarily needed. Then the SHSH, Paramico dots, and other things like set missing host key policy for auto adding. Like for example, if you connect your system to a new SHSH system, to a new system. So first of all, what it will tell you to do is add a missing. Like did you want to add this host to your system, which will add yes or no. So with this, this is what actually this search is SH does set missing host key does. So it will automatically add this for you without you doing it. So, uh, okay. So also with Paramico, you can also brute force XSH usernames, log usernames and passwords. Okay. This is how this is the SSH automation I I wrote. So once you use this SSH automation, it will, you can just use it to do a bunch of tools. So, so which I use the LS. So let me just show you how this what they called automation. So I use Paramico also, then like connect the IP, the username, and the password. So using the standard in, standard out, then the command I need to execute after, it also it automatically logs in. So let me show you the other one I come. Yes. Sorry, but first time. Okay. So, right now we are trying to brute force an SSH login. So, as you can see, this username, our and password after is correct. So, we are trying to brute force an SSH. So, for example, you can like get an access to an enterprise network or someone. Maybe like you can do a social engineering, find someone's like just do a Google search about someone, find his username, find his nickname, and other things like that. Then what you have to do just compose a list of a list a list of brute force username and password combination. Then you can just use it that you can just use that and make an SHSH. And once you are successful with that, then you can be able to. But you like you really one problem about SHSH is like you really need a lot of bunch of username and passwords like combos, nicknames, date of birth, and whatever you think is going to be like successful for you to get access to. To what you are trying to get. Okay. So, I think this few talks about what you can do with Python, but actually there is there's still lots more in which you can do with Python. For example, let me just come in. So this is a script for people doing reverse engineering with GDB, because most of these tools like Radar, like GDB, GDG, IDA, and other debugging and this assembler and other things like that support a lot of scripting tools, but which mostly Python is most supported. Like for example, this is an article I wrote on using customizing GDG for people who usually use Radar, which after you already 
in which after you already disassemble your code, reviewing the registers and other things like that. So all you have to do is break the main, then show, do a lot of bunch of things on, on your GDB. But once you are running on, what's it called, on radar, once you already view, it will give you a lot of the, a lot of the registers and other information. So as you can see, this GDB module dashboard is written in Python. So Python is a very powerful language. <laughs> so I'm not yet. <laughs> so if you have any question, please let me know. So.